To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 14, The Life of Sarah. No patriarch can go at it alone. To fulfill his divine destiny and birth the Hebrew people, Abraham needs himself a woman. So say hello to Mrs. Abraham, Sarah, the first Hebrew matriarch. But alas, Sarah is barren and 90 years old. So the promise of her Lord husband's deity that she'll birth him a child is laughable to her. What kind of character is Sarah? What are her attributes? And what can we learn from her story and interactions with other females about women's daily lives in the ancient Near East 3,000 years ago? Let's dive in. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. Yes, so it's like a kind of a first glimpse or a first glance at a, let's say, more or less or less complex <laughs> female character, yeah. uh, unlike uh, Chava, Eve. Mm-hmm. Here you see a little bit more of a telenovela, you see a little bit of more dramatic action. So it's, and she's the second, basically, female uh, character so far so far not 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 the second that is mentioned because there's there's a kind of female character before you know and stuff but it's like a there's a focus on a female character more or less yes for the first time since chava and that focus is her womb exactly the sentence in here is she didn't give birth to him so of Mm -hmm. course Mm -hmm. Even though we are becoming familiar with a second uh, female character, she's still objectified and her status is only relevant to her husband. But nevertheless, she can't bear children. But here there's also a, a, a glance, a glimpse at the perceptions of ancient Hebrews to a woman being barren. Uh, of course, there's some kind of subtext here that it's only her fault but unlike other civilizations or cultures even in the middle ages much later the they didn't treat barren women as like a Mm. disease or a plague or you know something they found a solution (laughs) the ancient lawyers found a a solution that you can have a concubine yeah and uh, a slave a slave and your seed will be still be yes. good it, it's it's still you it's not uh, tainted it's not uh, immoral it's not unholy okay. but but before we, uh, we get to that so sarah we call her sarah imenu our mother sarah yeah. so the first matriarch the one who birthed the first heir that will produce the hebrews she is barren so this is the miracle of yahweh mm-hmm. this is like the magic the the superpower that he has is really dramatic because Yahweh keeps reiterating to Abraham, you will have a great people come out of your seed. There's one roadblock on that way. He solves that problem even to her own surprise. And I think we take it too much granted now with all the technology we have and the overpopulation and, uh, and the fact that the modern uh, Western people make less children the grandiosity mm-hmm. of the miracle uh, mm. of making a barren old woman into a child caring right. woman <laughs> i remember I, I think we will tell that story over again in this uh, podcast but our first uh, exposure to the bible stories were when we were children the old testament stories Probably you, the listener, if you're not Israeli or... Uh, yeah, if you live in a predominantly Christian exactly. society. You're probably familiar more with the New Testament and the Old Testament as the, the great stories of mm. the Abraham, uh, almost yeah. killing his son, the yeah. Exodus, etc. Moses, et yeah. Moses. So we are exposed to tho- those stories as children. And I can still remember my thoughts and the feeling that I had when I first heard those stories i was like uh, seven years old mm-hmm. so it was in the second grade yeah. the magnanimity <laughs> it was a big miracle even to me the, 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 oh my god she was barren and old and he gave her a child it's it's a it's quite a miracle and i think for ancient culture especially if you have a patriarch 
it, it's, it adds some kind of a glorifying myth to your myth telling. Yeah. The fact yeah. that she was barren. It yeah. makes your seed even more miraculous. Yes. It, it kind of plays on the same um, level as Maria was a virgin. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's it like it's the same feel. And it's also the same feel of in the beginning, God created the land and the sky. It's like, boom, something out of nothing. Just a complete miracle that without the mm-hmm. Lord Yahweh, nothing. Mm-hmm. But before she's first arrived, so, the, so there's the whole thing with the concubines. Yeah. She's like, Hagar. I can't bear you uh, sons yeah. as you want. So here, take my slave, my female slave, the Egyptian Hagar, mm-hmm. and uh, sleep with her. And he's like, okay, I will do as you're told. This is her idea. Yeah. And then when she gets pregnant, ooh, there's tension. <laughs> there's tension. And this is like something that I'm sure has been true throughout history in these kinds of communities where the man has several still today, wives still today. even today in these yeah. communities right yeah. right right Bedouin community here in Israel Mormon communities mm-hmm. you have the first wife and you have the second wife and there is obviously tensions tensions, yes. tensions there so when she when her concubine when her slave drama drama hmm? drama drama yeah so so when uh, Abraham sleeps with her slave according to her wishes mm-hmm and she gets pregnant mm, oh, oh, oh. this is when things become testy because it says in the text takel mm. she makes light of her yeah but in the english of her authority <laughs> her authority but in the english it becomes uh, her mistress was despised in her eyes now nah. mm. no she just makes light of her doesn't light take her, her seriously yeah. she takes she takes advantage of her new status as yeah as the mother of the, the as heir as she should she's not yeah. a slave she's not a regular slave anymore. and she's kind of a hagar let's take a, a detour to okay. talk a little bit of a, about hagar because it, we see another female yeah. character yeah and she's kind of a victim here yeah and uh, it's kind of strange It makes me feel that Hagar is a little bit more famous than we make her in that area, in that area and that time, because they took uh, extra care to make her the matriarch of other people, strong mm-hmm. people, yeah. the Ishmaelites, yeah. which later Muslims appropriated as their lineage, the mm-hmm. Ishmaelites, and Hagar is their matriarch. Yeah, it's a good... Yeah, it's a good story. It's a good, she's a good ma- matriarch to have, to have in your corner. And I she, think. she, I think she's been portray- portrayed here quite fairly, uh, even though she takes, mm. she takes advantage of her status because she's a frugal, childlike woman. Who? Hagar mm-hmm. and Sarah, because... Sarah. Sarah. Sarai. She's still Sarai. Sarai. Why, Sarai. why the R? Sarai. If, if we if we'll get into like storytelling and script writing here then we'll yeah, we see will. we'll see in the relationship between Hagar and uh, Sarai Sarai <laughs> <laughs> yeah she doesn't have the H yet in her name yeah. later uh, yeah. the relationship it's like mm, let's try to imagine what women are talking about and act when they are not around us men they are probably bickering about men <laughs> <laughs> and manipulating and manipulating and There's an, an envious relationship yes, there, yes, yes, something yes, toxic, yes. and yes. It, there's not even a uh, action because when Sarai wants to to punish Hagar, she doesn't punish her herself. Yes, she tells her lord husband, husband lord husband, uh, you know, she uses her womanly power, uh, and Abram doesn't want it. It makes him sad. Yeah. <laughs> it says it makes him sad. because she wants him to exile, exile her. her and he does to he the desert her he and then uh, uh, angel comes and tell her don't you worry you will it happens twice son. yeah it doesn't it not happen twice it has two <coughs> versions one is the yahwistic version which is uh, better written if you read it in hebrew which uh, the first one is the yahwistic the first t- the, uh, in this story in uh, sarai's story there's a couple of um, stories that are reoccurring Uh, for example, Hagar is her Egyptian slave. How come she got an Egyptian slave? Because before that, we heard that Abram went to Egypt because there was a great famine in Canaan, because his wife was so beautiful, a 90 years old, <laughs> years old beautiful wife. <laughs> uh, he came to the, uh, a strange land, and he thought that this strange land doesn't know Yahweh, so it ha- is kind of a lawless, and the, the laws of the land permit the king to kill 
uh, a husband and take his wife. So he pretends that Sarai is his uh, sister. sister. And this story is it, uh, appears twice. Once uh, the king is from Egypt, once the king is from Grar. Yeah, uh, we talked about it. Yeah. Avimelech. Avimelech. King, father. Father, king. And in the later, the Avimelech one is Elohim. It's not Yahweh. It's Elohim. Ah. And it's... Okay. It's much more concise. It's much more minimalistic. The the phrases mm. there. There's no like, um, uh, for example, when the, he's exiling Hagar in the Yahwistic one, the angel tells Hagar, "Don't worry, your son will be a goy gadol. Will be a great goy, great people." He's called Ishmael. The explanation, the Yahwistic explanation, is because God heard okay. her cry, Shama, like <laughs> Ishmael Shama. And her son will be great. And yeah. the phrasing here is Yado Bakol Yad Kol Bo. We still use that. We still use that till today, and it has great sound. Again, li- so literally, literally, it means he has hands in everything, and everything <laughs> has hands in him. That's the literal, <laughs> literal sense. Literal it's it's, it's a, is a top of his game, basically. Very active. Yeah, very active. Does a lot of things. Yeah. Just to uh, reiterate the the drama of uh, Sarah giving away her slave. It says handmaid <laughs> in English. <laughs> nah, she's not a handmaid. No. She's a slave. <laughs> Shifra. <laughs> Shifra. So first of all, she says, she says, Ulai abane mimena. It's, 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 it's nice. It's like I will son from her. Yeah. Like son, like your son, your, your child is turned into a verb. So that's nice. Yeah. And then it says, and Avram uh, obeyed uh, what uh, Sarah told him. So he's just obeying. This is her activity and then when she gives it god tells him to obey her later later yeah so here to to just uh, emphasize the drama it doesn't say and sarai the took hagar the egyptian whatever and gave him he said sarai the wife of avram to remind you yeah and then again titen ota avram isha lo leisha which is also beautiful yeah because isha is also woman and also uh, her, her her man yeah Isha, so again to reiterate how difficult it is to give her man another woman. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.